ich würde sagen, weil weißt du, wenn du von der anderen Seite kommst und schaust, also das hier zum Beispiel, finde ich es eigentlich schon ganz gut, wenn das alles, also die Oberkante, das Gleiche ja. bleibt. Ja, weil das für eine Harmonie ergibt. Wirklich wie so eine Fläche ist, also wie so ein genau. Unterwasser. Genau. Und ähm, ich würde vorschlagen, dass man die anderen Skulpturen, also jetzt auch hier, obwohl die nicht zu dir gehört, ähm, auf, auf einer anderen Höhe hängt. Ja, auf jeden Fall. So wie die? Ja, das muss höher. Genau. Würde ich definitiv auch machen. Das konnte ich nicht. I got invited to make a set design for Donna Haraway for staying with the trouble. And I, I like the way how she thinks and also the way how she already thought like, like years ahead is a lot like, um, like a foreseen basically um, thought she already had. Before I did that, I already made uh, my, my solo show in Berlin, which was called Siggy on the Land of Trunken Trees, where I started making all the critters and um, developing all of um, these yeah, species without even like having red Donna. But um, I thought, okay, also non-intelligent creatures or robots, they also have a right to be here. And then how can we like, um, or how do we engage like with the simplest organism and what it creates and what it created, like from uh, amoeba to what we are now. Ich finde das eigentlich ganz schön, dass das so ein Flimmern ist auch und mm. also man erkennt natürlich die Tiere schon und dann verschwimmt das. Guck mal, hier wird es ein bisschen schärfer. Ich finde es eigentlich ganz schön, dass es so eine Andeutung ist. Es ist genau um, um ähm, auf dem Kopf. Also eigentlich müsste es, glaube ich, ge ähm, genau andersherum sein. Die, die Dinge war so, ich hab, muss das mal kurz okay. überlegen, mhm. von dieser Perspektive, also ich schaue von hier, mhm. also so da drauf. Das war genau irgendwie versetzt, aber es ist wahrscheinlich auch nicht so schlimm. Hier on, on land, on air, your body is basically two dimensional. This is how you feel your body. It's your weight and, and the pressure of the air. But if you Underwater, you basically become three-dimensional because then you also feel the pressure of the water into your system and the lungs. And the more deeper you go, the more compressed everything becomes. This is very interesting about that. And then, of course, the marine life is so fascinating in a way of that there is so much adaption going on in the sea that what we actually can't imagine. And the deeper you go, the more, um, let's say, special effects um, the marine life creates. And I think we can learn a lot from the sea and from the ocean. When I was very little and I started like making my own pond, um, like looking for quails uh, and I started like to to research them, to investigate them, how they come from a quail into a frog. And, and then I became like a, a fishing master, a world championship in, in fishing in, in our village, village wise. I always like caught the biggest fish out and I, but I didn't kill them. So I just took them and I transferred them into our pond. So we had a really big pond. And um, I also grew up Like I had a raven, a crow, which was like free flying and I found this bird and I took care of the crow and the crow just stayed with me. And I was not so interested into, into people. And uh, it was more like that um, I'm still like, oh God, I love pigs, but I also do eat them. Um, so it's this kind of, they would also eat me, I guess, if they had the chance. Um, 
but it's uh, so I'm, I'm more attracted to, to animals or like to fishes. I can just like sit for hours in front of, of, of like with the camera, with the GoPro and, and, and look like into small um, Pfützen, you know, and to see what's going on. So I always make this time lapse and start to see, oh, wow, this is a really tiny worm which lives there. And, so this is like, I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm fascinated. And then I'm trying to understand how this ecosystem works, because I believe that like, if you understand the smallest particle and the smallest um, um, yeah, system, then you also can understand the greater system. So you understand the, the, from the micro into the macro system. And this is also my fascination about ecosystems. I guess it's this fascination I have to to create something really like yeah strange or some something which you think wow what, what, what's that oh my god you're so stupid that you're already really like um, really good because it doesn't do anything all these robots they do weird stuff and I always think this is also like our stupidity we do in, in the real world producing all the waste and creating and making more and making more and starting from a new. I like to tell stories through movement but also through organic materials in order to, to understand also where we are and what we are doing and what we are create because I believe that everything is somehow connected. Solange es nicht dagegen klappert, ist es ja okay. Oder kann man da noch etwas machen? Das ist ja, also man kann das ja schlecht zurücksetzen, ne? man braucht einen Kante. Ja. It's a living plant I have I'm creating for this um, Quadrinale in Arnhem. And so I started to investigate um, all plants which um, we have now in our daily life for, for like spices like ginger, um, coffee, clove, nutmeg, pepper, everything which seems so very um, like normal, but it all comes from a, a colonial um, trait. It's also like very playful, but um, speaks a lot about um, the trait. And then I want to include the society and the um, restaurants in Arnhem to, um, to tell their stories and what their like um, most um, famous dishes, and then to include them into this um, yeah, living RKF because it's alive, it's not dead and it not talks about the past, so it talks about the now, where we are now, what we can do in, in this um, situation where we are. And I used to work as a chef also, I, uh, when I started to study at um, Olafur's, Olafur Eliasson, um, the Institute for Spatial Experiment, I was a bit like, overwhelmed by the whole situation because I came from Weissensee, which is a very sculptural um, yeah, space. And then I couldn't basically find myself in, in the institute. But the nice thing was that he had um, downstairs the kitchen for the studio, for the staff. And um, they always had the dinner together. And I somehow managed to, to then work for him in the kitchen to cook. Also, and then um, and I didn't have to go um, up to the uh, yeah, institute anymore. Uh, I was a bit like sneaking out of, of the situation. And then, and then I worked for, I made like workshops of fermentation and all kinds of other things. I tested out how uh, food is also related to to me and to also to the environment, what does it mean, what does soil mean, where does it come from. And then I started to like, after many years of, of testing out, 
I came up with this concept of the into the wild table. It's an edible um, table landscape, which is also speaks from a lush uh, utopian um, yeah, um, abundance on the table. And everything you find on the table, it's completely edible, but it always comes from a deep, in-depth research I'm doing in different um, countries. Wir müssten mal gucken, wie die mit dem da inter interagieren. Die sind halt so primitiv, die können nicht viel. Ja. I guess it's that we should all make more gardens, make your own communal garden and share your vegetables, uh, make more hummus, not, as she said, post-human. I guess this is a really important topic. And it's also like being um, compassionate to other species and see that we are not the only living um, yeah, species on, on Earth, so we should not be so nose up with our own presence. So also like, as I once said, like also ant has the right to live and is, has its own identity. I guess this is something which we could start of making communal gardens, making more compost and be more compassionate about our surrounding and um, now we, we basically experience a really interesting time with this coronavirus. It needs a, like a host in order to, to spread out or to survive, so it goes into you. But also like if you look to mushrooms, the mushrooms also like, or the trees, they need the mushrooms or as the ants need the lysis in order to, to survive. So it's, a, it's like a giving and taking. So at the moment it's more like a taking as we see, but it's also like because it's interesting because those viruses, they doesn't want to, to, to kill us. It's more likely that we want to destroy, destroy the virus because we are afraid of it, because it's alienated, it's, it's like something which threats us. So basically what the virus also does is like that all of a sudden everyone wants to become um, uh, unimmortal, but it's not happening because um, if you see the death rate of, of the virus and um, how uh, everyone talks about it and it's like this kind of like switch of like why all of a sudden no one wants to die or is dying. I mean, there is like different kind of, uh, of things, of course, like in, in the social environmental, if you look to the refugee camps and stuff like that, this is really uh, a tragic, or like to other countries, which um, no one talks about it. So we don't hear it, we just like look from our Western perspective to, to that. Uh, this is interesting also like uh, the more we, we try to investigate or to to destroy this virus the more it starts to mutate because it also like has its uh, survival instinct but I guess also it's normal because it's life it's earthly life is where we are there are much more coming up I guess the more like the permafrost starts to melt the more really million years old bacteria and viruses will evolve from the permafrost and and also I guess we have to we have to learn to cope with um, st strangers this is also what we experience with all the racism and with the migration that we should basically go behind that because it's not like what we don't know, uh, we don't have to fear. So we should, like what Donna also says, making keen, making ki uh, kinship, 
So to come together 